In today's video, how do you adjust calories and cardio to keep fat loss going when you're in bikini prep? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Rebella from ProPhysique.com and we have Lexi back. Hey guys. So Lexi is a coach and a competitor for ProPhysique. Not only is she a member, but she's also the president. <laughs> reference that most of you won't get. Anyway, so what I thought we would talk today about with Lexi is how do we make adjustments? Yes specifically for a competitor, right? Yeah, I mean, I wanna to talk to you. This is part of our bikini prep series. So if you guys haven't seen it, this is our fourth video in the series. We've talked about nutrition, we've talked about training, we've talked about cardio. Now that we have all that settled, we're gonna keep this project going that we got on bikini prep and talk about what do we do when it's time to make some adjustments. When fat loss is stalled, how much calories do we drop? How much cardio do we add? Do we add any cardio? What else can we look at to see if we are actually making progress? So let's dig into it. Um, what do we do, Lexi? What do we do when it's time to make adjustments? So typically the adjustments are gonna come from, um, you can either increase cardio or decrease your macros. Now typically the adjustments that are made to your macros when you are trying to move forward in a fat loss phase, it's gonna be a decrease in your carbs or your fat, or a little bit of both. Typically, I would say protein stays somewhat consistent throughout the fat loss journey. Um, and then the other variable that you can manipulate um, is cardio, so increasing cardio. Um, so those are the main two variables that you have to work with within a fat loss phase. And that's what you know he has done with me so far um, in this bikini prep. Yeah, so let's talk specifically about numbers and about how to make those adjustments because you know, just saying you're gonna adjust calories and cardio and, and carbohydrates doesn't give like a, a real raw picture. So let's just make up some made up numbers and say you're on prep and you're at 250 grams of carbs a day maintaining your weight and you're at 30 minutes of cardio a day maintaining your weight and we're not seeing progress. Well, the first thing I would do is I would pull from those carbohydrates. Maybe she's on like 130 protein, 55 fat and 250 grams of carbohydrates. Well, I know based on her size that that's plenty of carbohydrates for her. She's not gonna feel depleted if we pull some carbohydrates. But how much do you pull from that? Well, I don't wanna make too big of a drop. I would probably pull about 40 grams of carbs that week and I would probably take her cardio from say five sessions of 30 minutes of walking incline to maybe 40 minutes. So you start making these micro adjustments because although a lot of people will say, well, you gotta make a 500 calorie adjustment. The body tends to have these things called thresholds. And I don't feel you need to constantly be dropping 500 calories because you would run out of calories to drop very quickly. However, if you drop and make an adjustment of say two to 300 calories using a combination of cardio and a combination of carbohydrates and maybe a little bit of fats along the way, you can get the response that you need for another two to three weeks of prep. So explain to me how you typically do things with your clients. Yeah, I would say it's the exact same way. Um, I think that starting gradual is key. I mean, if you're starting at 250 grams of carbohydrates, um, right off the bat, you don't need to jump all the way down to you know 140. I think you want to be able to sustain on the highest amount of food and the lowest amount of cardio as possible um, while still dropping weight, right? So if I make the adjustment for a client, and let's say like we'll use Paul's example, we drop from 250 carbs to 210 or would you say 200? Yeah, I, yeah. Would, I would say 210, 200, 210 somewhere. I think 50 might be too big of a drop. Yeah. That's basically 20% of your carbohydrates at that point. Tip it, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm usually around 15 to 20% per adjustment. Yeah, yeah. And then I think that, you know, with my clients, typically I'll make that adjustment. We'll go at least a week with that protocol and kind of see how their body responds. Um, you know, if after the first week they are responding really well, well, there's probably not a need to really change anything until they kind of hit that plateau. Then we need to evaluate and see what adjustments we can make, um, maybe bring their carbs down a little bit more, maybe add cardio, maybe do a little bit of both, and kind of take it, you know, uh, on a week by week basis. Yeah, and another thing that we have to consider as coaches is that although we're telling somebody to eat a certain amount of calories, we have to understand how good they're being about their diet. How specific are they being with their tracking? Are they guesstimating a lot? Are they eating out a lot? This is about the time when I'll start asking people, how are you handling your diet? Are you preparing all your own meals? Are you planning your meals ahead, putting them in the Tupperware? Or are you just figuring it out as you go? As much as I want people to be able to flexibly diet and have freedom throughout prep, at a certain point, 
I feel you have to get specific and plan ahead. I absolutely would agree with that, um, especially with me right now being in prep. One of the things that I, you know, I'm very cautious about is I do make sure that I prepare all of my own food and. I, you know, I don't want to say protein bars are not bad by any means. However, there is a little bit of leeway for error as far as like what the nutrition label says for protein bars. So I have refrained from a lot of like packaged goods and I have gotten very specific. Again, I am in prep, so I have to kind of go to that level of extreme if I want to get good results. Um, so I do find that, you know, preparing all of my food gets, gets me away from any of that leeway. Okay. Yeah, and, and not only is she in prep, but she's what three weeks? Two and a half weeks out. Two there? and a half weeks yeah. out. So July thirty first, she'll be on stage. So if anyone out there is a competitor and you're considering competing, understand that your your focus kind of sharpens the closer you get to stage. When you start prep, you have a little bit of freedom, and when things aren't making progress, what you'll start doing is you'll start improving your processes. And certainly, listen. I'm all for packaged foods, but understanding that there can be as much as a 20% in either direction of the label claim um, of allowed difference of what's actually on the label. So the more you actually prepare your own foods, the less margin of error there is going to be. Um, also, you're just going to have meals prepared. When we get hungrier in prep, that's when like accidents are more likely to happen because of stress is high. We don't have something planned. We're really hungry. What's convenient? So planning ahead is going to really help you in this process. The other thing we got to look at is what else is going on in their lives. Oh, yes, it's that's not a big just one. cardio and nutrition. How is their sleep? How is their stress? So Lexi important. had an experience, you know, with Tampa Bay winning the Lex the Stanley <laughs> Cup the other day. Yes, yes. I live right in the heart of downtown Tampa and um, as soon as they won the game, the streets were just extremely loud. My whole apartment complex was going crazy and needless to say, I think I got like three hours of sleep that night. I, I heard music blasting until 4 a.m. and I had to wake up at like 6.30. So, and I'm a really light sleeper. So sleep was very, very uh, low that night. And needless to say, I stepped on the scale the next day and I don't remember the exact number, but I know my weight was maybe up a little bit or if not the same yeah and so the things that we're looking at as coaches it's not just what's going on on the scale it's what's going on outside the gym what's going on in your lives how is stress how is recovery but also we need to be taking pictures taking measurements because success and prep doesn't always come down to scale weight okay sometimes you'll see clients recomp they'll put on muscle lose body fat at the same time they'll notice their measurements their clothes are fitting much looser but the scale hasn't moved much. So you don't wanna get scale obsessed. Although it is a tool that we will use, when something happens like a night of short sleep mm -hmm. or something stressful or you eat something higher in sodium or for women when you're dealing with their menstrual cycles, our bodies are mostly water. So it's important to understand that although we're making adjustments, we need to allow those adjustments to happen, not get hung up on what the scale says every single day. Yeah, and I think also another good point is, you know, when you do make these adjustments, whether it's decreasing your food, increasing cardio, like give it a good amount of time before you make assumptions of whether or not it's working, you know? Don't just expect to drop 40 grams of carbohydrates and then the next day, bam, you notice a huge like drop on the scale. It doesn't usually work that way. Sometimes it does, but it doesn't usually work that way. Give it, I would say at least a week and evaluate and kind of evaluate the trend throughout the week. You know, I, that's why I really love daily weigh-ins. I know it can seem very obsessive to some, but at the end of the day, it allows us to see those weight fluctuations throughout the week. It allows us to see our, you know, our average weight and, you know, kind of make assumptions from that it, as far as at the end of the week, if we need to make any adjustments. Yeah, the, the, the weighing yourself every morning after you wake up and use the bathroom, it's just the most consistent way to see what's happening with your averages. You can always, on your update sheet, put you know five hours of sleep one day and eight hours of sleep the other. You'll always notice the more sleep you get, the more the scale drops. The, the, the longer our sleep cycle goes, the more our metabolism speeds up, we start to really notice those kind of things processing quicker in the body and noticing the scale drops. And oftentimes, I'll have my clients only check the scale on days when they can actually sleep in if they have, you know, requirements to be up super early and have to be up late the night before. So understanding that there are differences from individual to individual within kind of how we handle the updates. So when it comes to adding cardio, subtracting calories, of course, eventually we're going to reach a place where calories are sufficiently depleted where we're not getting muscle fullness. Also, cardio is highly elevated. So we're kind of in a state of constant depletion. So what we do in this case 
and I usually wait until weight loss has been kind of going for a while, is we'll add in a higher carbohydrate refeed day. Now, I wanna do a video specifically on this topic, yeah. but I don't want you guys to think that contest prep is a linear process where all we do is eat less and move more. There is more nuance to it, such as diet breaks, which is yes. a, essentially a week-long uh, refeed. There is multiple day refeeds, single refeeds. There's also modulating cardio, pulling cardio in, adding it back out, um, paying attention to the intensity of the cardio. Yeah. You know, you don't always have to add more time. You can add more intensity. Absolutely. You can add more meat. So for this video, I feel like I just want to focus on how we adjust the macros and how we adjust the cardio. Any other thoughts? Um, no, I mean, just to kind of stem off of what you just said, I know we're going to go into more depth in future videos, but again, prep and any dieting phase, so to say, is not always going to be linear. Um, you know, I'll use myself for an example in a nutshell, like when I started prep, I started with one refeed a week and then, you know, I had my show and then we brought calories even higher and then now we're back down doing two refeeds. So again, it's not a linear process. Um, and that's where having a good coach comes in hand too. Yeah, I mean, these are things that, you know, I've learned over a decade of coaching, having, you know, educated, uh, you know, fantastic competitors like Lexi. I get great feedback from her. Her updates are always good. And Lexi herself is coaching. And actually, I really never talk about this, but if you guys are interested in, in coaching for competition, I'm actually going to put a link below um, to apply for coaching. We do a free 30-minute consultation for anyone that's interested in that. Obviously, we just want to talk and see what your goals are and see if it's a good fit. But we are going to be in Fort Lauderdale. July 31st. Now I'm pretty excited for this oh, selfishly. It's gonna be fun. This is the first ever time that Pro Physique has been the title sponsor for a bodybuilding show. It's a pretty big deal for me. It's huge. It's gonna be just such a fun show and we have a lot of, you have a lot of competitors competing at the yeah. show. We have a lot of people just coming to yeah. like, it, I feel like it's gonna be a mini, a little mini like Arnold almost or something <laughs> like of that nature. I don't know that it's gonna be as well, big as the Arnold, but it is the first <laughs> ever show that Janet Leuk, our current Bikini Olympia champion has hosted. Uh, Dan Solomon, who actually runs the Olympia, is also her business partner. So it's a great show. It's in Fort Lauderdale. Um, if you guys are interested in coming, we would love to see you there. Um, it would just be great to see a great turnout of people that you know support Pro Physique because I really want to make an impact on the uh, the fitness community, continue to give back, and so you know helping put on some good shows is what we're here for. So. Continue to ask us the good question guys because I want to keep this series going. I want to get as granular as possible We'll keep niching down the topic so we get very specific to ex every question that you guys have for us Me and Lexi can even do some like Instagram live videos and yeah. those kind of things So we can really turn this you know as we continue to go down this road. We're gonna get more and more specific Absolutely, we can talk about diet breaks refeeds peak week um, Anything you guys want to talk about along the way put it in the comment section below and we'll do it for you Anything yeah. else? I don't think so, but I'm excited for the future videos to come. All right, more to come. Oh, and check out Lexi's channel. You just hit a thousand subscribers. I did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. you guys for I subscribing did. to our channel. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I'm going to be continuously documenting my personal prep, uh, documenting show day, and just continuously trying to put out at least. I'm trying to strive for like two videos a week. Well, Lexi is kind of famous around these parts for her macro recipes. So you called it what? Macrofied. I've kind of coined the term, yeah, macrofied treats. So if you check out my Instagram, um, I try and post a recipe or two every week or so. So I yeah. just posted one the other day. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Hope you're having an awesome day and I will talk to you tomorrow.